This is Glaze Gallery. It's part of the complex here at the uh, <clears throat> Shanghai Glass Museum. This is where they do the hot glass performance. And also if you're gonna do the do-it-yourself creative workshop, which I just did, it was pretty cool. Um, I had have one of the guys, uh, younger guys, do the translating since the craftsman um, didn't really speak much English. He knew how to say blow. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> you make, uh, you pick out what you wanna make. I made a nice uh, vase and um, you can choose colors. I chose like the multicolored uh, additive and um, it has to cure overnight, 24 hours, so they said they'll express it to you. And I think I get it uh, sometime between Tuesday, Thursday, today's Saturday. So be prepared for that. And um, I think maybe you can come back tomorrow and get it if you want as well, if you're willing to come back the next day. And I thought they closed at 9 o'clock, but they're only open late during the summer. So another, another thing to be prepared for. The um, extended evening hours on Saturday till 9 p.m. are only in the summertime. It was really neat to, to go through the abbreviated creative process of making glass art. And you get a little bit more respect for anything that has color added to it. Or things like this where there's one object inside another object. You know. And you understand how they had to do multiple times putting it in the fire to build up the layers and different pigments need to be added to those different layers so you appreciate it a little bit more if you go through just a tiny bit of the manufacturing process this is an American maybe Steve Weinberg 2006 Hmm, not sure where this painting is. Maybe uh, Czech Republic? I don't think it's Venice. <laughs> the uh, two glass making centers in Europe. Summer solstice. design store I was gonna choose like black or something for my vase and then I thought man eh, that's kind of depressing I don't know how it'll turn out if it's a dark color I think you can't go wrong if you do like a, a multicolor design because it's fun you know they close at four they left for a moment though it says huh they don't want my business I don't need their business because I made my own I made it my own Keep it glassy. I think this exhibit is still open and the brochure it said it was being extended to October 15th, 2014, but there was a guy put a check mark next to it, I think, on the little map, which I don't know what I did with, but. Keep it glassy. Design space. I got tickets to everything. Yep. Yeah. This is pretty cool. Keep it glassy and keep it classy. There was an exhibit at the MoMA. I didn't get to see it. I just saw some pictures in the Times, but it was of um, those geosphere with uh, where they put the plants inside, and it almost looks like they're completely self-enclosed. Little biospheres. These look like those candy rings I used to get as a kid. You know what one of the cool things to do is? To make fake fake glass. If you're uh, 
a science-oriented parent and you got kids that uh, it's a rainy day, you want to do a, a uh, doctor science experiment, you can uh, make a movie on, you know, they break a bottle over their head in the movies. It's not real glass. It's actually a recipe for um, sugar candy. And it makes like a brown beer bottle. Sarah Bakker. Where was I that I saw a exhibit on glass from Scandinavia. I remember going to a downstairs gallery at a museum and only having a few minutes before they closed to look at it. Where the hell was that now? This is here in China. Molo. Vancouver. Artenica Transglass Guatemalan Keep it glassy and keep it classy. That's what I always say. I like how they did this. I was wondering how it was balanced. That's real neat, how they hooked it together. So that's another thing you understand a little bit more. I was going to choose a beaker because I just wanted to see him put a handle on it, which would have been cool, but it wasn't a very nice beaker. I thought, oh, that'll be practical. And then I thought, well, this is really not going to be practical no matter what. Let me choose one with kind of an elegant shape to it. So I got a vase with a twist design, you know. Designer of the Year, Design Miami. I've been to Design Miami. It's over in uh, South Beach uh, by Lincoln Avenue there. I went through their art space. They rent out uh, studios to artists, local artists. Last time I was there, I did the Wynwood uh, Art Night again. Miami, that's always fun. Cumulus. Show me the way to go home. I'm tired and I want to go to bed. Had a little drink about an hour ago and it's gone right to my head. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. From Osaka. Lives and works in Kyoto. So that's the Japanese. I was reading about all this stuff in my last video, uh, or two videos ago, I guess now. All the different designers from around the world. SK Studio. Bubblegum Paperweight. Oh, is that what that was supposed to be? I was thinking it looked like a uh, balloon with the air getting lit out. I see now it's like bubblegum. Sticky, sticky everywhere. It's a mess. And I confess, Oregon, huh? Hippies from Oregon, slumped vase. Aruliden. Glasscape. Show me the way to go home Tired and I want to go to bed Had a little drink about an hour ago Tamagotchi Thomsai Tamagotchi These are cute Little cactus holders 
Keep it warm and dry inside, huh? The Jap J Japanese design aesthetic, even the contemporary stuff, is usually pretty, uh, what is it, uh, cute is uh, kokai. Les poupées, the dolls in French. Luca Nichetta, Nichetto, Nichito. I like that, it's like a little milk, milk carton. Look at that. It's kind of neat. Weinstein glass. Mainly beer stein. Hmm. Half pint. <laughs> Unzipped. Well, that's cute. I'd like to have that. You put little snacks in it like it's a Ziploc bag. That is pretty cool, huh? Yeah, more this way. Cactus. Telephone. That's a neat exhibit. Ah, balloon lights. This is neat. How cool. Are they suspended from the floor or the ceiling? The wall, I guess they're wall mounted, huh? That is cool, look, you can turn it on and off. <laughs> By the string on the balloon, that's clever. I don't know if you could get away with that in a living room though. It's a little gaudy, but maybe for a kid's room. Then again, I don't know if I would want my kid pulling have that glass come off the wall on him, shatter in a million pieces. Whoa, that guy was making something crazy. It is hot working with glass. They had an exhibit uh, when I was at Dublin Castle over in the carriage gallery, which is kind of like by the Chester Beatty Library in the gardens. And it showed Dale Chihuly uh, in his studio. I think they were making vases inspired by Ulysses, both the uh, James Joyce novel and the Original Homeric epic. Wow. The cool thing about glass blowing is it's an art and a science. You have to have an understanding of uh, chemistry more so, I think, than maybe you do with painting or certainly sculpture, probably, because. This is not solid. Not when it's at 1100 degrees. <laughs> Some people criticize Jill, Dale Chihuly because obviously a lot of his work comes out of a workshop. So is he the artist or his minions or yeah, not his minions, but talented people working in his workshop? And it's a similar argument to what they're doing during the Renaissance, you know. Now is at the Contemporary uh, Metropolitan Museum in Ueno Park, Tokyo. They had a exhibit on uh, Italy during the Renaissance, Florence and the uh, workshops that were pumping out. <laughs> Woo, he stepped on a hot glass. <laughs> remember when I was a kid we were doing an experiment in biology class and a uh, teacher burned a test tube over a Bunsen burner in front of the class because he wanted to make a real thin uh, 
needle. So he like stretched out the two ends as he burnt it to make like a little small glass needle funnel. I think we're doing a demonstration of osmosis and diffusion or something. He stuck it in something. It's hard for me to imagine that the two ends of the glass didn't fuse. I think he might have clipped the ends of it just to make sure before it really cooled and then stuck it in the liquids or whatever. And then he had some kind of a semi-permeable membrane, membrane between them or something. And he was dropping something into the each side of it or whatever. Kind of neat. Belmont Hotel. Smash. This Africa. Africa. The raw material, I think, for glass silica is probably pretty cheap. Uh, sand essentially right but the minerals you got to put in and the kilns and all the tools probably add considerably to the space uh, the cost um, and space you have to have to do this it's not like a you know easel and canvas and you know painter palette and brushes you got to have to be a painter in plein air, you really need to have a setup for this, you know, an industrial setup. It's a real commitment. Although I met a guy when I was couch surfing down in Beaumont, Texas. He's had a little studio set up in his garage. He worked for one of the chemical companies in DuPont or something other down there in South Texas. And uh, yeah, he. Um, He had a little thing in his garage that looked like it wasn't too complicated. Ooh, is it gonna smash? No. Cool. Now that's how we made my vase. He had to rotate it and use crimpers to get the rim right in the neck. Cool. Now he's got a beer, uh, <laughs> Beerstein. Looks like a calabash. So he turned an old bottle into that from a uh, actual beer bottle, huh? That's cool. Clever. Oh, and they tell you here, bush glass, Kenyan, <laughs> our newt visitor. That's one of the neat things about Africa, you see how much they do with so little, a lot of the artisans there. Somebody posted on my Facebook the other day, I saw my um, stream, there was a guy playing an instrument that he had pieced together with cans and stuff, like a, I think it was a guitar. Smushed. Well, they close at five. I, I thought they were open till nine today. I'm kind of pissed at myself. I would have gotten here earlier then if I knew it was, I wasn't gonna have as much time. Maybe I'll just come back tomorrow and I can pick up my, my vase. Sarah Botker. Focus. Crushed cup. Dutch coffee cups. That people like to squeeze to hear the cracking sound. Loris and Olivia. Tipsy. 
Oh, yeah, stacking up uh, glasses, huh? A lot of this stuff is functional, but I don't know how practical it would be to sip a cocktail or glass of gin and tonic out of that. Matilda Ringer, Rigner. Okamoto Shizuka. I like this one. Multiple entries vessel. Hmm. Water bounces out to be the same level in all the containers regardless of their shape and volume. Parasite vase and candle holder. That's a good idea. This is much um, cooler than M50. Maybe, I don't know, M50, I was like, eh. It was a lot of contemporary art, which a lot of times when you put it all together in like two dozen galleries, you just say to yourself, eh, none of it's real cool or. There's too many different styles are trying to contend with each other. When I was in Beijing, I finally went to 798. It's kind of the same thing. Shanghai also has Red Town. That's kind of neat to go to. Burning so deep, deep, deep. Burning so deep, deep, deep. I don't know why that just came out. That's a play I saw in high school. Fruit bowls. Utrecht. Blooming orchards between Utrecht and Leerdam. Raji Martins. It's kind of a cool fruit dish, you know, because usually when you have to pile up fruit in a fruit dish, it's kind of stupid and they all get bruised. It's better to have one like this. It's actually a pretty smart fruit dish. I'd like to have a fruit dish like that. Hmm. This is little baby's full of hot air. Aren't you little baby? It's an atomizer. <laughs> like these. Glasses. Gambling man. Well, I'm a gambling man. This looks like it's made of crushed glass. Crash glass. All over the world, down in old Mexico. Hmm. Dubious. You actually sit in these things? A glass leg. You could almost make a joke about that. You could say, that's about as practical as a glass leg. 
if you had a uh, like a wooden leg, but instead you made it out of glass. They called me Mr. Glass. Remember that from uh, Unbreakable? The character there played by Samuel L. Jackson is the villain. And he's like, at the end, he goes, I should have known that he, he didn't, you know, he was the villain and the other guy's the hero and like a comic book thing and how sometimes they actually used to be friends. I should have known. They called me Mr. Glass. Because his bones shatter real easy. I guess that's it, though.